Hello everyone and welcome to our Monday night Club Deck Corner here on Club at 22, the Rangers podcast. And a weekend where we witnessed the return of club football, Rangers put in a result of the season so far domestically and we see Haaland, Haaland trying to keep up with Cholak, couldn't lace his boots, etc, etc. I am your host Scott Carney and joining me tonight is Alistair Pearson. Ali, how are you? Very well. It's good that Rangers didn't ruin the weekend there. It was yeah, an enjoyable good. weekend watching Rangers for once. Um, Aye, just looking forward to tomorrow night. Yes, mate, very much so. Uh, Ryan, how are you, mate? I told you we'd been 4 now. You did as well, Ryan. It's good to be here. Hold it, I hold know. it. People can take it as tongue in cheek. I meant every word to that. <laughs> Not. Um, I love it. What about big Haaland boys? Like, we need to just oh. get out of the way with that boy's a joke. Oh, it's, I will make reference to them a few times tonight. I think in this podcast, we have to get out of the way. It's unbelievable. It honestly is just absolutely ridiculous. I've never, I can't remember somebody making such, such an impact like that. I, I can't. No. I mean, I know we, we've seen Ronaldo, we've seen Messi, of course we have, but this guy is, it's, 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 it just makes the game look as easy as you like. I mean, it really is ridiculous. Uh, bonkers. I wasn't Ali, you sat and watched that in your hungover state yesterday. No, I was out in a, a walk oh, yesterday. Oh, <laughs> a twelve, a twelve, what? twelve thousand step walk yesterday. Um, oh, what's that? I know. I don't know where you've changed yesterday. You've changed me. You're a different man. But I no, how am man? I just, it's just it's madness. It's it really is. It's, 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 I think it's at a stage where they need to start thinking to themselves. If he keeps playing like that, they need to say right. He's only allowed to play 10 to 15 games a season because <laughs> no, it's not fair. You it can't let him play. It's not fair. Eh? He's ruining football. It, it just isn't fair. Uh, uh, it's, it's wonderful to watch. It really is. But uh, I, 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 honestly, just beggars belief how good the guy is. It really is. It's it's um, it's frightening. I tell you, absolutely frightening. Uh, as I said it in the group chat, it's like it's like a cheat mode on FIFA. Do you know what I mean? Uh, where your striker gets 99 for everything. Do you know what I mean? The, the guy's uh, ridiculous. Um, mental. Right, so tonight we'll break down the Hearts game in a bit more detail and we'll preview the trip to Anfield uh, where Rangers are sure to continue the, the form from Saturday and put four past Liverpool, but we're just not sure how many Liverpool will put past us. Um, <clears throat> so yes, Rangers, very convincing win uh, on uh, over Hearts on Saturday. Ryan, there is only one man that we can start with. Uh, if you're looking for a striker, mate. Number nine for Rangers. Um, <laughs> listen, I, I am falling in love with him because he's just... I think he's got everything. And I've, There's a few people I watched it in the pub on Saturday and there's a few people saying... Same what everyone's saying and going, yeah, he's, he's, he's scoring goals, but I would, I would play Morelos the next game and I keep hearing this... I would play Morelos, but see, Anfield, I'd play Morelos at Tynecastle, I'd play Morelos, but oh, Celtic, but why? I don't know. Like, see his link up playing this myth that I know he's not as physical as Alfie, but see the link up play he did for, was it his, that was his first goal, wasn't it? And he it's plays it out to Kent. I mean, I don't know what you're wanting for this guy. I think he's, he's what I've been waiting for. And, and it's not a, it's not a dig at Alfie, but I think Alfie's needed a challenge because. We've went so long in terms of when Alfie's out, we're all like, we're all worried that we, we can't cope without Alfie. And we've got a striker now, we don't think about Ruth, we don't think about anyone else. It's, and it's funny because I don't think I said it in the pod, but um, one of the first games of the season, the guy behind me, <laughs> the guy behind me said, I don't see much in that Cholak. I think he's just like Cedric Kitten. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> He's a, he's a tad better than Cedric Kitten. I just think he's, he, he looks as if he's ready to finish anything that comes his way. And for me, I know a lot of people disagree, and I totally get people's points that Alfie does link up play and he is more physical. He's undroppable for me just now, Carney. I think he's a fantastic player and it's all different types of goals he scores and he's making them as well. He's link up play and he's settled in beautifully and he is... He's better than Haaland. There you go, I'll say it. <laughs> yeah, he is, right. Yeah, there's no, absolutely no doubt. I, I literally, for people that are watching, people that are listening back, this won't make much sense. The Ryan's cat was going bonkers in the background there, yeah. mate. What's I, it? She, I was like, yeah. she's 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 about to pounce, man. <laughs> she, like, loves she's Cholak. she loves Cholak. She loves Cholak, mate. 
<laughs> Ali, um, let's put cards on the table, mate. Here, when we signed him, we all said he'll be a replacement to Cedric Atten. We didn't really expect very much of him. The the first goal, his link up play is phenomenal. It's brilliant. It's exactly what if Alfie was doing it, we'd be purring about it. And we are purring about Cholak, I'm not going to lie. Um, and the finish for that second goal, I said it on uh, the post match that I done on Saturday. That's a world class finish. You, you're you've got you're scoring against arguably the best keeper in the in the league right now. Um, and the way he finishes it as if it was it was if it was never in doubt. Uh, his movement, he's he's running off the back of defenders. Uh, by far, to me, the best performance we've seen from him, and he's not exactly been poor up to now. No, I think he's getting better each game, Cholak now, and he's becoming. You know, we said in the group chat, Rangers' number one striker. And why? I know Ryan was making the point of a lot of us are saying we play Morelos. I think it's. I think that's us going back to previous seasons because he has been the main man, Morelos. But why drop a guy who's scoring for fun at the moment? I mean, he is scoring for fun. And if your striker's on form, you need to play him. Um, but no, I mean, his first goal, I thought he'd done brilliantly. Laid the ball out to Kent, broke his ass to get in that box. Great ball in for Kent. It was just slightly behind him as well, and he gets the head on it off the post as well against, like you say, Craig Gordon, who's a great keeper. But I thought he was brilliant. I like the start that came up at Sky at one point, and it was like two touches, two, sh- <laughs> two, two, something, two shots, two goals. I thought, that's exactly what Chulak is. Give the boy a chance and he'll put that in the back of the net. It's like tomorrow night, if he plays, you'd fancy him. If Rangers will get a chance tomorrow night, I mean, need somebody that can put it in the back of the net and he's your man. Yeah, I was very impressed with him. Um, it was a perfect start to the to the match as well. Um, I think it kind of knocked the stuffing completely out of hearts. So I know they grew into the game a wee bit after that, but McGregor only had one save um, the, the whole match to make. It was a, a very impressive performance by by Trulak. And yeah, um, that was that was me finally going, yes. Because I, I, I said it in the post-match, I don't know how Morelos gets back in this team. I don't. I generally here's, don't. Why? Here's one for you, Carney. Oh. We, we, we had a discussion in the pub after it, and we, we said, if that's Morelos for the two goals Trulak scores, does Morelos score those two goals? Probably not. Deep down, if you think about it, I, I think Fun. Cholak. I just think Cholak is just a natural striker. When Morelos has got a bit more of his game, but he's not a natural striker. I don't think Morelos, but big Cholak for me. I just think he's. I just think he's going to score all the time, Cholak, when he gets the ball, especially in these areas. Yeah, I think Morelos for the first one. Maybe not. And in form, Alfredo, I can see him scored in the second goal. He scored goals from that kind of angle before, but he would really need to be in his in his palm at that point to. To score that, Ryan, for you, no, I take it. It's just Cholak the whole way. <laughs> I don't, I don't want like I don't want it to come across. I dig it, Alfie. They are different, but I think, I think the first goal, no, I think Cholak clearly is that kind of target man. Where the game that always sticks out in my head is the old firm game at Ibrox last season, and they beat us two one, and we put in something like four thousand crosses into their box in the second half, and nobody got an end to anything. And Alfie wasn't playing that game, so but for me, Cholak is the perfect striker who will get on the end of things like that. And he showed up with that goal, his second goal as well. I never think of Alfie as a finesse finisher, and I think that was a finesse finish. I thought it was very cute. Yes, it, it maybe got a wee bit of luck, you can say that, but it was a very cute finish. Alfie drives things home. Alfie's a great striker, but I think we've got something special in Cholak just now. And I said it weeks ago, I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what game it was, but I said Alfie needs to play his way back into this team. And I think it will take Cholak to have a severe dip in form for Morelos to get starting again and get back in this team because you cannot drop. I mean, I would speak to someone, I think it was today, and they were like, oh, I would play Morelos at Anfield tomorrow. Imagine having that conversation with Cholak and saying, do you know what? You've been brilliant, you're banging them in, but see this game again against Liverpool. I'm not going to start you. You'd be absolutely gutted if you were Cholak because what else can he do? He is he is a striker at the moment and I, I can't think of anyone else having to want to start up front than Cholak. He's on fire. Yeah. Um yeah, I'm fully fully on that on that boat now, mate. Fully on that boat. Um always had a soft spot for Alfredo, but you can't you cannot deny the the form that he's in. You can't he, and he, he it would be a, a what a 
boot in the stones if we were to turn around and tell him that he's not going to start at Anfield. I mean, that's that's not a good thing to do at all. Not at all. Can you imagine, like, if, if we did do that, so say we do that tomorrow night and we play Morelos, and then you bring big Cholak in at the weekend and Cholak doesn't hit form, then I think that's a disservice to Cholak because he has earned mm. his right for me to play at Anfield tomorrow night. And I know, if not one of these, both of you might be sitting there thinking, I'll maybe play Morelos, but he's earned his spot. And there's a huge, a huge thing for me is, see the smile, you can see how much he's enjoying playing for Rangers. Like he is absolutely loving life at the moment, and now I just can't. I think it's a loyalty thing with Morelos, and he's been a great player for us. I think he needs to be patient. I think he's his behaviour's not been great, so we need to mm-hmm. take into consideration that Cholak was there at pre-season, knocking his pan in, has came to a new club and hit the ground running. He's put work in, and he deserves it. So I think Morelos needs to bide his time, mate. Yeah, I would go along with that. Uh, Ali, Hearts then decide to make it even an easier day's work for us um, as Devlin loses his rag, mate, and gets rightfully sent off. It's a stupid tackle. We don't know what he's doing. I think that's just frustration coming out in him. Um, he stamps down on the ankle of Matondo. It's not a good-looking tackle at all. Matondo may be a wee bit lucky. And then the ref tries to... Well, I can only say feel sorry for Hearts a little bit as he, he, he cuts off a goal that's a goal. <laughs> I mean, it, it just... Craig Gordon clatters into um, Matondo and our field gets a, a tap in, mate. Uh, but we should have been 3 0 at half time. Oh, it's a goal all day long. I, honest, I honestly agree agree with you, Kurt. I honestly think the referees went, if hearts are down to 10 men, and uh, we can't give them that because I feel sorry for them. Uh, that referee had a couple of strange decisions during that game that you might come on to, but it's a, it's a goal all day long. Craig Gordon's lost control of that ball. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, kind of falls into um, Matondo. So I, I don't know if I we watched <laughs> in the key side and Tommy was watching it with us. And um, for that for that goal, Tommy jumped up and his belt caught the side of the table and put <laughs> all the pints all over wee George. It's his <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was unbelievable. It just went up in the air, man. It was brilliant. And, that, and Tommy turned around. Right, Tommy, that, that goal's been chopped off. He's like, oh, Christ. That, that was only entertaining back there, really. <laughs> Poor George. <laughs> All over him, honestly. Oh, that domino effect oh. with the pints. Oh, oh that's, a, that's torture. Um, I, I mean, Ryan, the referee, that, that decision, see if anything, if anything, it's a penalty to Rangers. If anything, it's a penalty to Rangers. And obviously the, the one where he kind of made up a rule where it hit him and then he let the play go on and then he stopped it and decided, no, I need to bring that back. And yeah, a very, very strange performance from the referee, but for, it was for both sides as well, but this one, mate, this is a goal. Aye, I thought it was a bit card happy as well. That referee was quick to, yeah. to book people in for both sides. Um, the pub I was watching in was actually like, there's a two guys sitting next to me, one was Rangers and one was, was that mob. And when when Africa scored that goal, like, and they get chopped off, we all kind of had a laugh about it, and the boys like, ah, bloody hell. And I said, somewhere out there, Michael Shirt will be sitting there going, I think that, that that's a foul. I think that's a foul. Even yeah, though the boy who that, that boy sitting next to me supported that lot and he's sitting there going, that's a clear goal. And you wonder like if that was nil nil, would they have given the goal or not? It felt like it was a oh that's a game changer, it's almost half time. I better not give it because I'm not hundred percent sure. It's you know me, I'm anti VAR and I don't want VAR here because it's gonna cause complications, but this season is screaming out for it. That's 3-0 at half time and, and the game's done. Um I he did not have a great what was that referee? What was his name? It's not Don. Dave McLean. I was, I was not, I thought it was Nick. Was not is that who it was? It was Nick Walsh. Steve McLean. Ah, Steve McLean, that was it, yeah, that was it. Yeah. Um but I I thought he had a poor a poor, poor game. He started all right, but then card friendly and some of his decisions were, were shocking and they are screaming out for Val this season. It's I Unbelievably, the referees have got worse this season, I think. They've got worse. <laughs> Maybe they were all expecting VAR to be here already, mate, kind of like this, because it, it's went very quiet, the whole VAR chat, hasn't Maybe it? Maybe they're it's making a point. I'm not be making a point going like, listen, let's just make as many bad decisions as we can. Let's <laughs> we, know what, I, we know we're terrible. Please give us VAR. Aye. Yes. Aye. It's a protest yeah. as I sit in. <laughs> uh, Ryan, I'll come back to you. <clears throat> um, the midfield lineup. 
of Lindstrom, Jack and Arfield. Um, I don't think there's any great doubt that Arfield had a shocker. He was very poor, in my, oh, in my opinion anyway. I'd be interested to see what you guys have got to say. Um, but we we bypassed the the midfield for pretty much every goal. I know Lundstrom plays the ball to Matondo, he does, which is a fantastic ball to Matondo, but it's a cross field, it's literally over the top of everyone to get to him. Does this just highlight the, the lack of recruitment that we've done in that midfield? Because honestly, see Ryan Jack and Scott Arfield, Scott Arfield was effective in the game to a, to a, a point. His passing was, I mean, god-awful, really awful. He should have scored from the one that he brought down at um, the edge of the box that he puts wide. He should score that, and arguably he should he should have got the tap in, yes. But the few slip balls that he passed through and the one he played for, um, Ryan Kent was off. Uh, Ryan Jack did the same when he was trying to put Scott Arfield in. He played a, bit, a yard and a half at too much pace. I don't know who he th- maybe he thought he was playing to Scott Arfield 10 years ago, but he was never going to get there. But the midfield lineup, mate, so even... We got to the half time at 2 0. I was still thinking, our oh, midfield have had very little effect on this game, apart from Lundstrom. Aye, everything was down the everything down the wide areas. And I mean, let's give Lundstrom credit for that. That pass, as, as McCoy yeah. said, was a straight out of the one o'clock gun. It was <laughs> an absolute peach. And he always tries it, Lundstrom. You see him, you guys will see it better than I do. He always tries these big switches and it works for us sometimes, it really does. And he's the guy to find to find these wide areas. But Arfield and Jack for me were ineffective. I think we have this conversation with Brian Jack numerous occasions and can't remember the last time he played 90 minutes for us. I don't know what's happening there. I don't know what's happened with Ryan Jack. I don't know whether we're we're persevering for the wrong reasons. I, I genuinely don't. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing McCann again on Saturday, if I'm honest. But Scott Arfield had one of those games. He had one of those games where nine nine Sundays out of ten, I have when I'm playing seven sides, the touch isn't there. I wish I could still play football. It's not there. Like everything runs away from me. It's just he, he just had one of those games. But I've said since the Broncos came in, the Broncos likes Arfield because of the here's your B plug for the full strip. He breaks the lines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting paid for that plug, by the way. I don't like that strip, <laughs> um, but he does. <laughs> he breaks the lines, Arfield, and um, he just had one of those games, mate, where everything was off. He's passing, he's shooting, absolutely everything. I'd, I'd imagine Scott Arfield's quite an honest guy, and he'll know he's had one of those days, but yeah, our midfield was pretty poor, and I don't want to be negative because Rooney's have won 4-0 at a, at a away game where we, we always have the fear, always think to ourselves, time cast was a hard place to go, so Rooney's have done brilliantly and got a great result but the central midfield is a concern I think it's been a concern for a while and Gio's still not got got that balance and in terms of recruitment yeah we've not we've not, we've been screaming out for a centre attack or a box to box midfielder for three or four windows now and we're still we're still screaming out for that Lundstrom can do that tidy he takes it from the defence and he, he's tidy play he plays it to the left brings it back and but we are screaming out for a box to box midfielder, and I don't think we've got it. I think Ryan Jack and and Kamara and the rest of them they all do the same kind of job, and I think we're screaming out for that type of player. It would make such a difference to us if we could get someone like that in January. Definitely, um, Ali. We've been been a wee bit hard. Some of Arfield's runs were good. Yeah, maybe we were, he wasn't getting found. Whether his finishing touch was going to be there or not, I, I, we don't know because the his passing certainly wasn't, and from the efforts that he had, weren't particularly great. But obviously, we went to the second half, and Ryan Jack comes off, and Davis comes on, and. Davis was almost playing more attacking than anybody else. And I know they were down to 10 men, but you're still going, and I love Steve Davis, but that's our answer. Do you know what I mean? Just now, that is our answer, is to bring on Steve Davis for Ryan Jack. Um, it's Surely, long term, it's we're going to need to do something about this in January. Yeah, it's giving me the fear. I thought the midfield was really, really... It's bizarre saying it, we've won 4-0 away at Tynecastle, but the midfield was poor, bar Lundstrom. Um, mm. I thought Jack, you could tell he'd played during the week with Scotland, looked dead in his feet. Scott, you know what Scott feels like? He has these games now and again, Scott Arfield, where just nothing comes for him. Um, it was one of those games, unfortunately. And that's why you've seen Rangers, like you say, bypass the midfield. They, they play the diagonal ball. Goldson, Lundstrom, I thought Davies can play that diagonal ball as well. I thought he looked decent. 
Um, and that's the way we went because the midfield, there's no creativity in it. It's slow. I've said it all season. And the fear for me going forward is obviously Tom Lawrence, I've been told, obviously, <clears throat> is out till after the World Cup. And you look at our midfield now and it's like, who do you bring in? Because even Tillman, to a point, has went backwards. Ah, he's got that lazy kind of feel about him. I wouldn't trust him in a big game either, i.e. tomorrow night. Um, Lowry, I don't know how far away he is, but we, he's, he's only 18, the boy. But it's worrying that we don't have anything in this midfield at the moment um, going forward. Because Lawrence is, Lawrence is that guy. But <clears throat> like Ryan was saying, but... You're going back to the well with these same guys again. That's what we're stuck with. And it's like, come on, this this should have been highlighted a year ago. And we need to wait to January now. And it potentially could be too late by then, but hopefully not. Yeah, quickly, I'll quickly touch on something that Stuart Robertson had a, 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 an interview, an interview, a, a, I don't want to call it an interview with Rangers Review um, on Friday. And he mentioned about the, the lack of deadline day activity. And, that we didn't want to bring our players in for players' sake and such, and I'm kind of going, well, surely you must be looking at the midfield. I understand we have players out injured, I do get that, <clears throat> but now with Tom Lawrence being injured, and same old Ali there jumping ahead on agendas uh, and bringing this up now, but it's fine, mate, I'll adapt. Uh, it, it, there is, there's going to be, there's going to be at points, we cannot, with these amount of games coming up, and it's no disrespect to the guys, and I don't want to sound like I'm being pure negative, because the guys have done us a such a good turn, but Jack Davis and Arfield, they're not going to be able to do this. They won't be able, to, they don't have the legs in them anymore to go and do this. And I think Ryan Jack likes to think he does. And to a certain extent, I think Scott Arfield likes to think he does, but Davis will know himself. He'll know I can't play the next 10 games straight. Like, I'm not going to be able to do that. And yeah, it's Ryan, it's a, it's a real concern going forward, especially when I heard Boring's there just before we, we started recording me that he's going to be out until after the World Cup. I was just like, we we have to get Alex Lowry into this team now. I I read that I t- literally just before I logged on. I just read the, the text message you put in the chat. I didn't I didn't know about Lawrence and it's a huge concern. I think Ali's been very kind there and what he said, but I think it's a huge concern because yes, Saturday was great and we played well and we did the job and we've won convincingly at a place like that. But we, we're going round in circles. Rangers have been going round in circles for a long time with these players now. And when push comes to shove, on numerous occasions, they've proved that they can. Davis is a great player. Jack is it all to prove, and I don't think it's going to happen for him. Lundstrom is that solid player that you need in your team. Kamara, this midfield is, don't score goals. Where is Kamara? Where is Kamara? He's not been on the bench the last two games. I know he doesn't want to be here, but... What's the script with Camaro? That that's I, I think I texted that in a chat the other day there, Ali, and he's he's come out, which well, that surprised me the other day there or last week, I think it was, and come out and said he's open to or oh, I've always wanted to play in the Premier League. I find that a strange interview to do in September or October because mm-hmm. the window's shut and you aren't exactly playing well. Um so I found that a strange interview and I wonder if Van Bronckhorst maybe found that a, a bit of a a poor choice in terms of when he's done the interview, but like I told you, I'd, I'd heard that he'd, he was open to a move, so disappointing from Kamara, but my point here really is these guys aren't goal-scoring midfielders, and, and I, I know somebody's going to jump in the comments when I say this. You look at that a lot over the city, when they're, when they're midfield and their wingers, they have got goals left, right, centre-mid. They've got them all, goals all over them. And that's where I worry, and I hope I'm wrong, that's where I worry that when push comes to shove over the course of the season, we're going to fall short because it can't all fall on Antonio Cholak. He can only score so many goals, you can only create so many chances for this guy. Matondo, Brian Kent, Lundstrom, they've all got to step up and they've got to get their numbers up and Brian Kent scored a beautiful goal on Saturday. A really a really nice goal and a goal that we all know he's capable of. We need that so so much more than he actually shows us, and um, yeah, it's a it's a huge concern for me. Don't want to start going down the negative route as we as we know we've had a tough couple of weeks, but this midfield is a concern going forward. I don't think anyone can deny it. 
Yeah. Uh, speaking of the the goals, obviously it was good to see Alfredo coming back on and getting a goal as well. And I, I get that Hearts were, were tiring, um, Ali, but it was good link-up play between um, Tav and Morelos for the goal. Morelos hits the ball so hard that I... I I seen a tweet on Kerryfield meltdown that somebody called it out of order. How hard Alfredo Morelos hit the ball, which always makes me laugh. <laughs> it generally always always makes me laugh. And yeah, as Ryan mentioned, um, Ryan Kent with an assist and a goal on on Saturday. Um, that's pre- a pretty good shift for him. We're not going to lie. And I suppose the question at the end of that, mate, is will this be the turning point for Ryan Kent? You would like to hope so. It's about time. I- I think I read somewhere that's his first goal this year. I think. Yeah, I think so. He's not scored in ages, man. I couldn't tell you last which, time he scored. Which is, if if that's the case, he scored one goal in this calendar year. We're in October now. That's absolutely diabolical, to be honest, for a winger. Um, he was trying it all game, Brian Kent, and I was happy for him. It, far the midfield, what we've kind of spoken about there, I thought it was a perfect Saturday for Rangers. The, the right guy scored in Morelos, Kent. And you'd like to hope we can kick on for here. Because if you look at the fixture list going forward, I think it's it's kind to us um, going forward until we hit possibly Pataudry in December. But looking at all the games on paper, we, sh- we should be taking maximum points from these teams coming up. Um, I know it doesn't work that way, but we should be. Um, but no, I was I was delighted for, for Morelos. Good to see the knee slide as well. I like the celebration. I like that. That right. woman in the crowd swearing at him as well. That was brilliant. Um, and Ryan, you can't Kent help yourself, well. can he? Manilas can't help yourself. Ah, yeah, honestly, I love it. I love it, mate. Nice I team. absolutely love that. Same. Man, same. Same. And I know there's the pictures of Tav, and he's kind of pull him away and stuff like that. Let him do it because it's fantastic. Like ah, yeah. that's he's the, the hatred for Morelos, and I know we're jumping away, or I'm jumping away here. The hatred for Morelos is. They call, they call him out for his weight and such whatever they like, but the hatred is because he is genuinely a great player for us. That's what it is. It's a hatred because they know he's a threat and he's hated all over Scotland and I love the way he knows it. He knows it when he goes yeah. up to the crowd and does that. He knows he's hated. So, yes, I love that for Morelos. I'd, so, I'd, even, I'd even say as well that I know Hearts were 3 4 nil down at the time and they're doing it at the time. And, I even thought Sakala when he came on offered something. I thought he looked bright. I thought he showed. I've not really talked about Matondo, but Matondo had. I thought he'd done well setting the second goal up, but didn't really offer much out there. I mean, that right hand side's been up for grabs for years now, <laughs> and he's another oh, right. guy over there that's not. Doesn't he look like he's up to it? Right. Do you not think that Siba Matondo? Do you don't think it's screaming out for us to just try him in the left hand side one game? And I don't know what game you well, do this on, but I feel well, as if he yeah. looks a natural, kind of like Kent, where he'll cut inside. And I, I just think well, it's screaming yeah. out for him to have a wee shot at, at the left hand side. Well, that's where he played his uh, previous club. He played in the left hand side. Um, we playing him on the right because obviously Kent plays on the left hand side, but. Uh, I, I don't think Geo fancies Sakala. I'd give Sakala a run in that right hand side. Not tomorrow night, but in the league because <laughs> <laughs> oh, <thank God. laughs> he's probably the type of guy who would score tomorrow night somehow. But, Aye, probably. Um, but no, I if would he scores tomorrow night, run. I'm getting whack a whack a tattoo in my arm. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Matondo. I'm, I'm the same, and I, and I maybe I'm being a wee bit of Alvin, but half people might see it a different way, but. I'm expecting more from my my right sided forward, if you like, and he did really well for the goal. We did. I mean, the the pass for Lundstrom superb. Gives him the, he's got the time to bring it down and run it run at him. I mean, he, I mean, he cuts inside. He doesn't exactly go past the guy, and it's a great slip pass through to to Cholak to finish it off. But apart from that, I just and he got a torrid time. He did. They, they were quite harsh. They were quite full on to him and trying to stop him. And obviously, he's got pace to absolutely burn. So they didn't want to any point for him to get a yard and get away. But yeah, I still that was a wee bit. I mean, I think the difference is with Sakala. If Sakala gets the ball and goes, "Where's the goal?" I am just going to run that way, and hopefully something happens. That's generally the kind of player that Sakala is. But I did think so. Sakala come on, and I, again, I know the Hearts were tired, but I thought, well, oh, that wasn't the worst. But I would have given my run of games. I really don't know, mate. I, I, I think he frustrates more than anything else. Um, so who do you play? Who do you play on the right hand side? Do you just persist with Matondo? 
Well, I'm, I'm even shocked that Matondo got a start in the first place because I, I was yeah. convinced that Scott Wright was Joe's boy. Do you know what I mean? I just yeah. convinced it would always be Scott Wright. So um, when I seen his name in the team sheet, I was like, woofed. I was like, I was a bit of a shock. I think it's good, though. I think it's good, though. I think it's good that he's, for me, I was worried that when Matondo wasn't in the squad, was it Celtic Park? I can't remember. It was one of the games he wasn't in the squad at all. And I it was thought, one at Ibrox the other week. One at Ibrox the other week. And, and I thought, if, it, if you spent money on this guy, you've already decided he's not good enough to even be in the squad, I'd be concerned. I think, I think, I, I totally agree with you. I think he needs to show more. But we need to let this guy settle in. We need to remember he's at a new club. A lot of these players come, and I always say this one, and it's, I think it's just getting older and maturity, if I'm honest with you. These players aren't used to coming to a club that you have to win every single game. Like, we need to win tomorrow night away to Liverpool. It's laughable, <laughs> but if we get battered tomorrow night, then it's it's going to be all meltdown again, isn't it? So I just think we just persevere with Matondo. If he comes in and out of the team, then let's see how he gets on. And I'm going to wait till after Christmas before I'm going to judge the guy. I just think... And I think, I think a winger is the hardest position to nail down at Ibrox because... If you don't beat your man every single time, you know what that crowd's like. It's like, yeah. oh, everybody's on his back. So, I he's he needs to show more. I don't agree with can they? But I I think we persevere him. But I would like to see him on the left hand side. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see for sure. Um, and I think it'll be interesting to see if he actually does get a sustained run in the team because maybe that's what he's looking for. Maybe that's what will bring out the best in him. But yeah, um, as far as Saturday goes, um, a cracking result, a crack, a much improved performance. No doubt about it that it's much improved from the, the Dundee United game. But I think you can tell by our, our conversation that we've had about it there is that there's still more to come from this team. But that is a very, very, very good benchmark to start off with. We were all very delighted and we all enjoyed us Saturday very much. Uh, thank you, Rangers, for just not ruining our weekend for one weekend. It was tremendous. Uh, right, we'll move on to Liverpool preview now. Um, Liverpool are doing their best to make it as easy as possible for City to win the league. Uh, however, I don't think City will be stopped, as the aforementioned Haaland is just making football look easy just now. Um, the second best striker in the world just now, obviously behind Cholak. Um, they Liverpool a 3-3 draw with Brighton at the weekend um, at Anfield. She's them um, not really in their best of form. Um, I caught a lot of calls of their big hitters not really coming good so far this season. They're ninth in the league, which I couldn't believe. See, when I checked that today, I was like, what? <laughs> they are ninth in the league. Um, they, they have played seven games, which is one less than the top three. But even if they win that game, um, they would only move them, only move them, they would move them up to fifth. Um, Ali, there probably isn't a better time to be playing them. However, I will caveat that with they are Liverpool. <laughs> they have won the Premier League recently. They have won the Champions League recently. Uh, it is, it's, but it's safe to say they're not in the best form going into this, mate. They're not in the best form, but still, I wouldn't be looking at that going... Come on, they're a good, come on, yes, get the bath and fever going, mate, come on. They're, um, <laughs> yeah, they, they, I mean, looking at them, they've leaked a lot of goals this season, Liverpool. I mean, obviously, that was three at the weekends. They've, they've leaked a lot. I know they gave somebody a doing 9-0, it was at Bournemouth or something, a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, they seem to le- I think it's the way they play Liverpool, that's why they leak goals. Um Brighton are a good team. They actually play good football, Brighton. They're so fourth. um yeah, no, fourth. they play foot they Graham Potter before he left had them playing football. They they play football Brighton, so um yeah. <laughs> it's going to the difficulty is because the way the teams in the league we're in, Napoli and Ajax, it's a it's a tight league. Liverpool need to beat us tomorrow night because if Ajax go and beat Napoli, then they're in six. Napoli's in six or whatever it is and Liverpool have been three so they need to beat us tomorrow um, and they'll fancy themselves to beat us they should beat us realistically come on um, but I don't know I just the way Gio's going to set up I know how he's going to set up I've, well, we'll come to the teams and that but I think we are just going to sit in and play no, for I a can't. counter-attack with Ryan oh. Kent I really no, do I, I really do yeah, I, I, I am of the belief before we, well, we'll come, I suppose we'll come on here, but I, you, you do that, you're just asking for it. In my personal opinion, you'll get, they'll carve you open for fun. Do you know what I mean? In my opinion, there's just no point in that. Um, I, I just, I just I think he'll, 
I just think you look at the Napoli blueprint, if you want to say, for the first 60 minutes where we kept it kind of compact to a point, had a couple of chances. I think he'll go along those lines again. I really do. If it was me, Carney, I'd go and have a go with him because tomorrow it's a free hit for me. I look at it as a free hit. Um, I'd go and have a go. I know you can, they can tear you apart or whatever, but I'd go and have a go. But um, yeah, I think he'll be um, aye, defensive tomorrow. Hmm. Ryan, your thoughts of Liverpool ahead of this? Look, it's a, do we call it a battle of Britain? We certainly need a battle of Britain performance tomorrow in order to get in and out of this, out of this game, I think. Our first line, minus 50. My just points for Ali there, that's <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, get that in the comments whether you want Ali to appear in this podcast again, because that's, <laughs> that's like Rangers are running tomorrow night. <laughs> no, uh, it's a battle of Britain. Of course it is a battle of Britain, and I think it makes it a bit tastier because Liverpool are they're melting at the back. They're, I've been watching them all season, and I've got I've got a couple of mates who are Liverpool fans go to a couple of games and whatever, and they're proper Liverpool fans. And one of them texts me on Saturday, he's like, you must fancy your chances. I was like, oh, hold on. Like, <laughs> with, with beat hearts, like, can it? And he's like, I'm not joking. Wait, He's like, wait till you see us. So I watched match of the day on Sunday with a cup of tea and a hangover, and I convinced myself that we were winning 3 or 4 now. <laughs> um, being, being truthful, Van Dijk and Trent Alexander-Arnold have, have fallen off the face of the earth. I don't know what's happened to them. They're world-class players. But they just look, I think Klopp said in his interview today, that there's a lack of confidence for them just now. And um, the Liverpool of last year or the year before, I would be terrified of because, they, I mean, what a phenomenal team. They've got players all over the pitch. And, and yeah, Rangers, if Rangers go and sit in tomorrow, the inevitable will happen. It will it'll probably be a bit, a bit of a doing. But I'd like to see Rangers go and have a go tomorrow night and just, I don't see their... Diaz, this boy Diaz is a phenomenal he's footballer, good. but yeah. aye, he's phenomenal. But if you think of like Fabinho, etc., I don't see them as overly fast in the centre of midfield, which might work for us. The only thing that I do fear, the only thing, I, not the only thing, I fear a lot of things with this Liverpool team if they click. But there's one thing that I do fear, and nobody's really spoke about him because he's not set the header like this season, is Mo Salah against Borna Barisic. Oh. Borna. <laughs> Is playing well. alone. Best player this season, right? No. <laughs> Borna is playing well offensively. He's getting the crosses in. He's managing to get up and down the wing. Borna defensively, when he's got somebody running at him, makes me just <laughs> a bit nervous. A bit nervous. And um, Mo Salah is not a bad player. So that's one that I'm a bit concerned of. Um, maybe Klopp will rest him. I don't know. I, don't know. But, uh, I think it's... I think it's but see, see, being honest, see for a neutral, it is a tasty one because, like I said, Liverpool aren't playing great just now. There is a lot, there is low confidence, and Rangers need to get a result tomorrow night or they're out of the Champions League, pretty much out of the Champions League. So it'll be interesting to see. And I, I'm a, I'm not going to say confident, but I'm, I'm not feeling it the way I would normally feel it. I'm I'm probably in that camp, mate. I'm not going to lie. I'm probably in the in that camp. Obviously, the, their form it doesn't really matter. Their form. Yeah, I'm only really saying that for reassurance for us. Um, they are Liverpool. Um, they have quality players all over the park, and if they do click, then I I don't see how we stop them. I generally don't. Uh, I have I had had the thought, mate, about Mo Salah, Mo Salah up against Barisic. I was like. <laughs> that's going to be an interesting one I can see a lot of doubling up happening on our left hand side that is for sure uh, but it's going to be it's one of those games that you'll probably remember um, no matter what happens I reckon it's one of those games that you'll remember because it's it's always got a wee bit more to it when it's a, a kind of battle of Britain and I'm looking forward to it regardless. I really am. Um, I wish more than anything else I was going tomorrow night. I really do. Uh, but um, I, I'm not. But I don't want to get into why I'm not because we'll end up talking about my jails and that again. And oh, I'm sick of talking about my jails. Uh, but it's one of those games, I just say, one of those games that I think you'll remember um, no matter what. And yeah, I'm looking, of course, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, look, I'm going to be so nervous. Of course I am because of, of what we've seen this Liverpool team do before. Um, but 
Who's to say we don't get them on an off night? Who's to say that we don't we don't play the best football we've played under Geo and something special could happen? Who knows? You've got to try and remain as positive. Well, more positive than Alistair anyway. Um, Clock said uh, Rangers are a good football team. They're well coached. They had an exceptional season in Europe last season. Uh, that's what we'll prepare for. Um, we expect a proper fight. Lundstrom did an interview earlier with um, Sky and he said, going to Anfield, you need to have a solid foundation, whether it's a back four or five. We really have to be on the money. I think all of us individually and collectively need to perform well to get a result. So, Ali, I think you could read between the lines there. Um, we think the possible back five, which it's probably going to be, let's not lie. Uh, but to me, as a free hit for Rangers, very little pressure on us. Little pressure in the sense that nobody expects it to get in from the game. Maybe the maybe the coaching staff and the players will feel a wee bit added pressure because of what Ryan said that uh, we don't get a result and Champions League football is is pretty much done and arguably it could be the end of European football this season. Um, but I think we one thing we'll all want, and I'm sure that's before I even before I even say it to you. Um, we do, I want every player to leave everything out and on that pitch tomorrow night. And if I see them doing that and we get tanked, fair enough. Honestly, fair enough. But leave everything out there. Take your opportunity if it comes your way. But just go out there and just give it your all. Yeah, that's that's all you ask for. It's the bare minimum from what Rangers should be doing. But yeah, that's what you want. <clears throat> I think there's a couple of players on our team that have got a point to prove tomorrow night, especially against Liverpool. I look at Ryan Kent, a boy that was rejected at Liverpool. He's going back there. He's got a chance, and he's done it in Europe last season, Ryan Ken. He's got a chance to put on a performance tomorrow night. We all kind of know he wants away. He wants away to, to go to the Premiership in the summertime. Tomorrow's his chance to showcase it on a big stage against his previous team. The boy Davies as well, who I thought was decent, I think will play tomorrow night. Again, a point to prove. Was at Liverpool, seen not good enough. Lundstrom, again, for that neck of the woods, a point to prove. Yeah. Now we're talking, uh, Ali. Now we're talking. No, I, that's you. Yeah. That's you. Nah, no, no. I'm, I mean, I'm previously I wasn't negative. I'm just, I'm just, I just think that's how you set up. I would, I would have a go at Liverpool tomorrow if it was me personally. But um, I just think there's players in that team with a point to prove. I think Shagger and Goal will be there. He'll be major for us tomorrow. Um, but yeah, we need to be compact and disciplined. Every man needs to be on their game tomorrow to, to have a chance against. So let's be honest, Liverpool's one of the best teams in the world at the moment. I know they're not playing great in the league at the moment, but when they click, they are. So, yeah, we've got every chance of, of getting something tomorrow night, but we all need to be in our A game tomorrow. Absolutely. Ryan, just do the players have no regrets? Yeah, as you say, I think you put it perfectly as they've got to leave it all out there. And they have done that in Europe in so many occasions. And that I think that's why we're all frustrated as a support that we know we know the levels this team can play at. We know what they can do. We've seen it not one offs, we've seen it so many times in the past couple of years where they are the underdog and they, they turn up and they prove everyone wrong and they make a point in European football. Liverpool are a fantastic team, great team to watch, full of talent. That boy Diaz is Another level for me. I think he might, he could end up at Real Madrid or something. I think he's so good, like such a good player. I would be delighted if he's not in that team tomorrow night. Um, Rangers need to leave it all out there and they can. They can. They need to have faith in themselves that they can do that and they can give a, a Dortmund performance or a Leipzig performance. That's what they need to look at. That's the standards that they need to look at. And if they give that and they, they, they leave it all out in the park and Liverpool come away with the result, I'll be happy. I'll be a happy fan because I, I know they've tried and I know they've given their all, but they need to turn up. There's no doubt about it. If they don't turn up or they feel sorry for themselves, they'll get turned over and they'll get turned over big. Yes, they will. They absolutely will. It has to be uh, everything happening at the right time and every player being at the absolutely their best and giving absolutely their all. Uh, but either way, it's a, it's a mouth-watering thing to look forward to. It really is. Um, you want a Champions League nights back and they really don't come much bigger than this. They really don't. So we're going to the, the team predictions now. Um, Ali, do you want to go first? What do you think your team's going to be and your score, mate? Yep, like I say, this is a team I think Gio will play. This is not my personal team. I would go more attacking than what I'm going to say here. 
Shagger and goal. I think he's pretty much said today Shagger is now number one going forward. Yeah. Um, so Shagger and goal. I think we will play this five at the back or a three, whatever you want to say. Tav, I think Lundstrom will sit back in there. Goldson, Davies, Ryan's pal Barisic. <clears throat> This is where it. This is what I don't like saying what I'm going to say here, but I think this is who's going to play. I think it's going to be Jack Amara. Arfield. Yes, we well, know Kamara. No, I, I, no, Arfield <laughs> Davis will definitely come back, and I think the old head to dictate the play. Jack Ryan Kent because he's the out ball, and I have to play Cholach. I have to play him because I think we'll get a chance in this game and he's the man to finish it as much as folks say I Alfie and he kind of can bully them a bit big chalk for me and I'm going to go oof, I'm going to go one each we're going to nick a goal with five minutes to go and it's going to be Cholak Did you name 10 players there or did you name 11? I think he did I think he did I think he like so. yeah, yeah, um, McGregor Mc, McGregor Tav Lundstrom Goldson, Davies, Barisic, Arfield, Davies, Jack. Right. Um, so I Kent Morelos. Uh, yeah. Kent Morelos? Sorry, Kent and... Uh, oh, Kent, yeah, hell, mate. Hell, 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 hell. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, went, I, went, I went for 13. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, hey, Ryan, Go, and one each, mate. It was yours, Ali, sorry. One each, yeah. Right, right. I am going for a similar team. I've went McGregor... Tavernier, Goldson, Lundstrom dropping in, Davies, Barisic. And I think it will be Stephen Davis, Arfield. Did you say Arfield, aye? Yeah. And then the same three, aye. Just the same team as me. Aye, it's the same team. But I think Stephen Davis would definitely come in for, for Jack, aye. No, I said Jack, so you're missing him on Sunday though. No, I'm not going Jack, no. I don't think Jack... doing well in eight lads, do you that? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you playing there, Ryan? I think Davis... I think Davis will, well, I think I'm going to the same team as Saturday, apart from Davis. Davis for Jack, but Lundstrom will drop in to the five. Oh, sure, oh. I think Matondo. I'm playing Matondo, yeah. Oh, God. I think he's got it. See for the out ball. See that? I mean, see the ball yeah. that Lundstrom played? I know it's just one ball, but I think that's... We need... Kent's always our out ball in these European games, and I think isn't a bad idea to have an out ball at Matondo as well. I don't I know if that's like through it. attacking. I don't know, but I think that'll be your best chance is hitting them on the break like that. Um, and I will go 2-1 Rangers, and I'll go Ben Davies to score first. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, my team's different. Um, McGregor, Tavernier. This is probably what I would play, I think. Um, McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Lundstrom, Davies, Barisic as the kind of back back four. I would I would like Lundstrom to play in the middle, not at the right hand side, so he can drop in between the midfield and the defence the way he used to do, but we seem to have stopped doing that. Um I think it will be Steve Davis will definitely come back in, I think. And I'm I, I, I'm torn between Ryan Jack and Scott Arfield. I really am between the two. Uh, I don't think Kamara will play. I think maybe he will. Maybe Kamara could come straight back in. But the fact he didn't feature at all on Saturday, I would be shocked if he comes straight back in. So I'll go Ryan Jack. Uh, and I think Tillman will play. And Kent and Cholak will be the kind of front two. So a kind of 5 2 1 2, if you like, um, with. Lundstrom dropping in and out and Tillman going wide when we've got possession with Kent uh, on the left. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I think. I think 2-1 Rangers as well because you have yes, to believe. Yes. You have to believe and Antonio Cholak to score first uh, because why would he not score first? Uh, look, massive game, huge game. Um, I'm generally a mouth-watering tie to look forward to and, uh, as you said, no matter what, just we just want Rangers to go out there and give us something to something to back them with, something to cheer, something to get behind the team. 
and what will happen will happen. Um, I don't think we are expecting much from it, but you, you've got to believe that you can catch them on an off day and you never know. It could be one of those nights to remember and I hope it's a night to remember in a good way. <laughs> in, a good, in a good way. So for tonight, Alistair, thank you very much. No problem. Just uh, on to tomorrow. Excited about it. Um, I, I'll be buying up for it tomorrow and it's, it's over to you now, Rangers. It is. Ryan, thank you as always, mate. Cheers, boys. Really, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow night. I think this is where we always wanted a big draw in the Champions League and this is what we've, we've been craving for. It's not been a great start to our Champions League campaign, but we're away to Liverpool in the Champions League group stages. It doesn't really get bigger for us than in, in, in Champions League football, so I'm really looking forward to it. So I hope the team can turn up and just give us something to cheer about and something to just really be proud of so and they're capable of it can they they are i believe that i have slated them for weeks and weeks they are capable of giving us something to be proud of so let's hope they can do it yes mate let's hope they can um i'm the same i believe that this if this team click and um, we've seen it in europe before we can see it in europe again Um i didn't expect dortmund to happen the way that it did and look what we look what we were witness to so um yeah uh, just go out give it your all that's all we can ask that is all we can ask uh remember if you'd like to cont- uh, tell support the podcast to continue to help us grow even you can join the youtube channel for as little as 99p or 199 to really support us reach the next level uh, and you can also buy the podcast a coffee and you can sign up to the coffee buying membership as well through the buymeacoffee.com uh, as you say all the links for that will be below for that thank you to the two guys for joining me tonight um, as always if you could please do like the video subscribe to the channel that would be great uh, we will be back tomorrow night win lose draw no matter what we will be back tomorrow night with a reaction and let's hope we're all sitting here ecstatic about a, a really memorable night for rangers in the champions league so yes enjoy the game if you can i'm sure we all will uh, speak to you after the game tomorrow we are club at 22 the rangers podcast play up the famous glasgow rangers cheers everybody <laughs>